Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Scoreboard Media. Scoreboard Media works with high schools across the country to run professional sponsorship programs on their LED scoreboards. Whether you already have LED and you just want to supercharge the revenue, or you want to use sponsorship revenue to buy new LED video scoreboards, Scoreboard Media can help. They work with sponsors and advertisers locally, regionally, and nationally who want to connect with your school's community. Email info at scoreboardmedia.com to start the conversation and see what's possible. Balancing family and coaching life a challenge and I've asked a lot of coaches this question and it's really fun to see different approaches over your career what was your way of balancing coaching and family life my number one suggestion is marry well you gotta marry some uh, somebody that's tough Gayla and I will be married 38 years uh summer so she's she's going through a lot but we had four children. She brought them to practice, you know, when they were when they were old enough to to behave, you know, the way they needed to. They rode on the bus with us. They sat on the bench, took towels and water. Um, but otherwise, if they didn't come to practice, you like I might not see them awake that day because yeah. you leave early and you've got junior high games you got to go to. You've got responsibilities, and so. Having a wife that's that's involved that is a part of the calling, and I and I really believe coaching is a calling. Some people get put out by that, but I don't think if it, if you're not called to it, you can't stay with it very long. Um, you'll stay with it a while, but you yeah. you you get you you start you find another path. You and and that's okay. Coach Meyer told me this too. Like if you don't believe coaching is a calling. Wait till your child plays for someone who's not called to coach. That's good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, I, wives are the key, and uh, because coaches have to do what has to be done, and sometimes you'd rather be home, but you know, laundry's got to be done. You've got to plan for the. You've got to fix the bracket for the tournament. You've got, you know, there's just so many things to do, and summers are busier now than they've ever been, so. Think, be where your feet are when you're at home. Try to try to be at home. Yeah, but man, with coaching, that's really hard because you can go out fishing, and I, I'm not. I really don't have any hobbies. That's why I'm still coaching after 40 years. But you can be out fishing, and still you're thinking about what if we did this with the you know if the two and three like interchanged, and then we flare screened, and you're thinking all these thoughts while the lines in the water, but you're still coaching, you know. It's consuming. I'm ashamed to say how many times I've thought about a new entry or a, a different way of doing our out of bounds plays during worship at church. Oh. You know, obviously, well, I'm not trying to, I don't want to be disrespectful in those moments, but it's just so hard for your mind not to race that, especially when you love it. Uh, so, anyway, just, yeah. Yeah, you just stepped on my toes because I've used the back of the bulletin to jot down notes because I didn't want to forget. You know, you, you nailed it, though, I think. And there's a couple things I've heard a lot of coaches say. Mike Neighbor said he almost got mad at me for using balance. He said, try to have balance. Like, what are you talking about balance? And your point, like, well, bring in together coaches that have those younger kids and bring them in, bring them into it. And and one thing, uh, my wife's dad it passed away two years ago now, a little less than two years ago. But when I we were dating, he was a football coach for a long time, uh, 30 plus years. And those dudes were, you know, like they, if there's a group of coaches out there that understand the grind. It's, it's football coaches seven days a week. But we were talking about how Jana would, would do, you know, with knowing what I did and everything. He's like, she'll be she'll be a really good coach's wife. And I've never viewed her just the same way you've never viewed your wife as she's a co- just just a coach's wife, obviously so important to us. But you're right on the money. Like you, there's going to be times doing this that uh, it's just, just challenging and there's heartache and you feel like you're letting everybody down. Well, you 
you don't want to go home and feel that even more. And you want to go home to somebody that you know has your back. And man, Jan has always had that. I'm sure your wife has always had yours. But to kind of come back around, making sure that she knows that she's more important than the game. I think that's one thing Jana has done a great job over the years of letting me know those times where it starts to feel like this to her and she calls me on it and I love her for that. That's awesome. That brings to mind of the old Billy Tubbs quote. You may have heard it, but Billy Tubbs was a almost as funny as Abe Lemons. Like he, it was, he was a great coach, but also really witty. But he said, uh, he was at a clinic. He was talking about one night his wife just started crying and said, you love basketball more than me. And just was kind of caught off guard. He said, well, I love you more than track and field, but we won't want to get to that point. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I, I do love that you, that you called it that. And I think, I think the, the, the calling piece to me is when I feel like I'm not called to do anything else. Cause I think that word called to do is what people maybe get uptight about called to do this or that. And kids will say, I don't think I'm called to play basketball anymore. Well, I don't think you really, you know, I don't think you really loved it. I think that calling piece to it is just like knowing that we're exactly where we're supposed to be. And sorry, th just a quick little story, but. There, there's a few times in my life where I, I really felt like I, I, I physically felt God's presence and pleasure in what I was doing. And one time was in Iceland, I'm playing, and I can remember it just dribbling towards half court and this feeling of like this calm sense of joy. Like it's kind of like in that movie Chariots of Fire where he made me for a purpose and he made me to do missions, but he also made me fast. And I feel God's pleasure when I run. Like I felt it at that moment at that at half court, but I've also felt it sometimes during, during those moments when a player achieves or does something that we've been working on and you see the joy. And I feel like I'm a part of that. And like, that's where the calling piece to me is we all know if you've done this long enough that there's a lot of times where you feel like, is this worth it? Like, why am I doing this? Real estate, I could probably make a lot more money and spend less time. But man, when it's a calling, you just, you can't imagine being called to do anything else. Yeah, that's so true. You know, two quick stories, if you don't mind. One is, you were talking about you've been in, what, 16 years? Yes, sir. Yeah, I would have never dreamed that I would be here for 40 but like I said, I don't really, I don't really golf. I don't fish. I don't hunt. I don't, I just basketball and family are really my hobbies and trying to be a good child of God. But when, when I was younger, I'd go to coaching school and they used to, at the regional meetings, the coaches would get their 25 year plaque. And man, I would be like, how in the world? Could you do this for 25 years? I couldn't imagine. And I've blown it out of the water, so I'm still here. But the other part about coaching that that I think we sometimes lose sight of the impact, we were on a cruise a few years ago. We were in a hot tub. It was kind of a quiet place. And there was this kind of boisterous man. And there's me, my wife, and my our youngest son. And he was, this guy was bragging. He's like, yeah, I go on a cruise at least once a month. I make so much money uh, to do this. And that. so he's bragging about how much money he made, bragging about how how how, uh, how many cars he had, how many cruises he goes on. So and finally, he's a, so what do you do? I said, I'm a coach. And he got really quiet. And I thought, wow, that's someone that you never forget, you know? And it completely took him to another place. And I, it kind of still got, tears me up to talk about it. But like he went from arrogance and bragging, braggadociousness to just like, wow, hope. Yeah. And you could tell that somebody had impacted him. I don't know if it's positive or negatively, but you could tell somebody had impacted him in his life that was a coach. And so that's a great reminder to us that, uh, you know, to be intentional. Yeah. That goes full circle all the way back around to how we started this call. 
yeah. by you as a high school player, never really thinking about you were going to be a dentist. Man, what a obviously would have impacted some people that way. I guarantee you people would be less happy to see you. I can't stand going there. It's one of my least favorite places to go, but I know the importance of, of the dentist, but just the people you've been able to impact because that coach saw something in you. Wow. Yeah, now I've got, I don't know, untold numbers of, of kids that played for us that uh, are head coaches themselves now. It's uh, the tree. Yeah, it's crazy. Just the number of lives they're impacting daily. Yeah. So, it, man, you talk about humbling. It it gets that way in a hurry. Wow. I, this it made me think of a play. I used to go to Bentry Bible Fellowship in Carrollton, and Pete Briscoe was the pastor there when I was there. And the reason I loved Pete, Pastor Pete, was the very first time when we moved to Texas and we went to, we were visiting churches, went and sat there. He just happened to mention in that service that he played college basketball. He actually guarded Carl Malone a few times. And and so the moment that I found out this dude played, I, got, I was in, this was our church. That's my pastor. And, but he did a play one time by himself, like a one-man play called The Bama Seat. And, and about on Judgment Day, you know, when we are in front of Christ, what that could look like. But a big part of it was seeing the lives of people that we've impacted personally, but then watching the multiply effect of how, like, think of the person that influenced Billy Graham. And then all of those lives that Billy Graham influenced is accounted for, like, to that guy, Joe, you know, Joe. But it was like, and, and, and the whole idea now, and this is just, is, the character he was playing was a believer, but like most of us, not always living it out, not always sharing. Just it's a personal faith. It's and uh, in that moment, he only had a few, a small group and talk about treasures in heaven. Those are the crown, like those are the treasures. And he wanted more treasure to, to give back and, and to show it. But it just made me think of that. And I, I, man, I haven't thought of that play for years but that's kind of that is the coaching tree is the amount of people coach i can't imagine the thousands that you have impacted because of the people that directly you know you had play for you or work for you man like forget wins which you've had a lot and and years all those things i gotta imagine that's that's a, a good goal to have yeah, that's still the most rewarding thing because, you know, I love to win. I hate to lose. Probably hate to lose more than I love to win. But, man, when uh, when former players call, come by, uh, and you hear about things they're doing in their life, and they still call you coach, man, it doesn't get much better than that. Ty Compton from Pikeville University was the first person I ever heard call them coaching paychecks. Like those are coaching paychecks. When you get that text from a guy that maybe you had some issues with, but after a loss, that's the player that texts you and sees how you're doing. Like yeah. coaching paycheck right there. That's a great way to put it. I wish there had been cell phones when I first started. Cause you know, like it's a, uh, you just lose track of people because yeah. it used to just be landlines. And now with cell numbers, man, we're able to keep up. I've got a group of three former players that uh, we're in a group text and uh, we talk every single day and that's, uh, that's rewarding. But hearing from, hearing from all of them is rewarding. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.